Hey guys, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. For those of you who do not know me, my name's Sam. I'm a professional hairstylist and today's video, I am going to be critiquing my followers hair. So this is actually the third one in the series that we're doing. And basically you guys send your photos in to me, let me know your hair concerns, ask whatever questions you have. And I just share my professional opinion. I let you know what I think about your hair, answer whatever issues you're having. And since they're always so well received, I decided decided to make it a permanent thing on my channel. So I think about once a month or so, I will do one of these videos and I set up a separate email address. So rather than you sending your photos to me on Instagram and them getting lost in all of my DMs, I will just have that separate email account just for these kinds of videos. So if you'd like to participate in a future video like this, send your photos and any hair questions or whatever to that email address. With that said, let's get into this one. Okay, so the first photo is from Allie. Oh my God, so pretty. She kind of reminds me of somebody. Loie Lane maybe? She said, I have never really done much with my hair. I've been doing the same haircut for as long as I can remember. I dyed the ends of my hair years ago with splat hair dye when it was popular. Besides that, color has never been applied to my hair. I would love to try a new color or a new style, but I'm so scared. I'd love to get your opinion. I think that length looks really good on you. Your hair looks nice and full and healthy, but I would say if you're looking to change it up and try something different as far as your cut goes, I think side bangs would look really nice on you because your hair is nice and full but up on top it kind of like hangs a little bit flat so some side bangs would add like a little bit more volume and texture and just something more like up here in this area and as far as color goes your natural color is gorgeous but I think you would look so good too with a really warm light brown color. I think that would be so pretty with your eye color and I think it would match your eyebrows really well. So those are my suggestions. Thank you, Ali, for sending in your pictures. The next photo is from Rebecca. She said, I feel like it's really dry at the ends and my hair seems to get greasy the day after I wash it. So most likely you're just having a dryness issue. And what's interesting about that is when your scalp or your skin, because your scalp is skin, just like the skin on your face, when your skin is really dry, our body overcompensates for it by producing more oil. So we end up getting really greasy. But meanwhile, the root issue is dryness. So I would suggest switching up your shampoo and conditioner. I really recommend the Paul Mitchell Tea Tree Lavender Mint Shampoo. It has a tea tree in it, so it's going to be really good for your scalp. It's going to get it nice and clean and remove any of that like extra oil, but it's a moisturizing shampoo. So it's going to give your hair the moisture that it needs. So that should take care of the dryness problem, which then should also take care of the greasiness problem. And I would also suggest getting a dry shampoo to keep it looking fresh in between washes. And a little trick is rather than waiting till your hair already is oily to then add the dry shampoo, just spray the dry shampoo in your hair on day one after you're done styling it. That's what I do and I find that it just helps prolong my style and it prevents my hair from getting greasy as quickly. So try that out and I think it should help you. The next photo is from Zoe. She said, do you have any tips for curly hair? I've stopped straightening my hair about four months ago and my curl pattern is slowly coming back. I just find it gets really dry and it's hard to preserve my curls for the second day. Any tips would be appreciated. So the thing about curly hair is it's just drier by nature. And when your hair is dry, that's when it's gonna get really frizzy, your curls aren't gonna be as defined and laying as nicely. So I would suggest only washing it with shampoo like one time a week, and then in between doing a co-wash. So Paul Mitchell under their lavender mint products that I just mentioned, they also have products specifically for curly hair. But there's a lavender mint co-wash, which is pretty much like a cleansing conditioner. So it is going to give your hair that clean, 
feeling without being as harsh as a shampoo. They also have a whole bunch of styling products for curls under that line. Honestly, there's so many that I can't even think of all of the individual names, but I know there's like a curl cream, a lightweight hold gel. I would suggest putting some type of styling product in your hair. And then what you can do in the morning too, if you need to refresh your style, is just get a little spray bottle and just kind of get your hair a little bit wet. You don't have to get in the shower and rewash it or anything like that, but just get it a little bit wet, add a little bit more product to it, kind of scrunch it with your hands a little bit, and that should help the curls bounce right back after sleeping on them. So yeah, check out that lavender mint curly hairline from Paul Mitchell, and I hope that helps. The next photo is from Jenna. She said, so my hair is longer now, but I've been going back and forth on whether or not I should go lighter. Maybe not full on blondes, but some highlights or just a deep brown. Help me. Oh my God, you are stunning. I just feel like you have one of those faces and I don't know if it's your features or just your makeup, those bold brows, like I don't know what it is, but when I look at you, you have one of those faces to me where you could pull off any hair color that you wanted. And I also just feel like I picture you, I mean, you'd look bomb with just like some brown hair, like chocolate brown, gorgeous, beautiful. But I don't know, I just feel like with your features, I just see you with something really bold. Like that black that you have is gorgeous. I also could picture you with like a really bright red or I picture you with like a white blonde. Now, I don't know your hair history and what you have on your hair currently as far as artificial color goes. So getting to that white blonde, it's probably not something that's going to realistically happen right away. It's going to be a bit of a process, but yeah, you could literally pull off anything. Maybe what you should do is honestly just get a whole bunch of wigs so that way you can just do a different color like every day because you you could literally do anything you wanted. The next photo is from Mary. She said, I love your videos. I watched them before cosmetology school, throughout cosmetology school, and now being a new stylist. Your videos about being a new stylist are so relatable. Oh, thank you. Okay, so looking at this photo, at first, when I looked at her roots, to me, it looked like, oh, she has grays, so she gets highlights to blend them. But then when I went to look at her page, She's like really young, so I don't think those are grays. I think that the highlights, and it could just be the lighting. That's the thing that's always tricky about looking at photos. Photos sometimes don't pick up the colors true to tone, or the lighting can totally affect how the color looks, so it just might be the lighting. Because you can see from this photo that the sun is shining like right on the top of her head, and then there's some shadows down at the bottom. So maybe it's just the lighting, but from what I'm seeing in this photo, the highlights, like the touched up highlights at your root look a lot lighter than the rest of your hair. And they're so light in comparison that it kind of, at least in this photo, it sort of looks like you have gray roots. The highlights don't look like they were done poorly. They blend really nicely from what I can see, but I would just correct the tone and just match everything up. So I would either pull it through and brighten up the ends of your hair to match the highlights on top, or I would just darken up that root area a little bit, tone them down so that they blend with the rest of the hair. It can always be tricky when you're touching up highlights because the hair that's right up at the scalp, especially when you're putting it in foils, it processes so quickly and it gets light really fast. So I feel like that's a pretty common thing that happens, but thank you for sending in your photo. The next photo is from Yolanda. She said, I did my own balayage last month, but I feel it needs more life. Oh, that looks pretty. That color is really pretty. I like that tone. The only thing that I would suggest that I can see from the photo, there's those couple pieces right up top where it could be blended a little teeny bit more. The back of your head is always a pain in the ass to do. I'm sure the back of my head does not look very well blended, so. <laughs> but I would just go through with a darker color, something that matches your natural root color, and I would just kind of like very lightly feather and blend that down a little bit more. Because those pieces also, they, they come up a little bit higher than the rest of the pieces, but I don't know. It could also just be like the way that your hair is laying. It's kind of hard to tell from this photo. What you also could do too, 
I don't know what you really mean by like giving it more life, but I think what would make it pop a little bit more is adding some low lights. You do have a lot of dimension in your hair, but there's more lighter pieces down at the bottom than there are darker pieces. So I would go through and just add a little bit more darker pieces to it. It's gonna make those lighter pieces pop even more, and I feel like it'll give it a little bit more life like you said. So I hope that helps. Thank you for your photo. The next photos are from Karen. <laughs> she sent two pictures and in one of them, I can see her ass cheeks. Oh, cute butt tattoo. I'm gonna crop it just so we don't get demonetized, but she <laughs> said, sorry to send you a boudoir, LOL, but it's my favorite picture of my hair. Your hair looks gorgeous. I I wouldn't change a thing about it. Perfect, I love it. The second photo I'm assuming is many months later, maybe even a year plus later, and your hair looks really grown out. You can tell that the toner has faded, but like I said, that first photo is beautiful, so I would do that again. The natural color of your roots looks really good on you too, but I really, really love that blonde, so it is up to you. I would say either do that blonde again, go back to whoever you went to the first time, and just maintain it, and it doesn't need to be a high maintenance color. You would only need to go in like maybe once every two two months or so just to get the toner refreshed, maybe like two to three times a year just to bring the blonde up on top and around your face. And then like once a year to bring the blonde up everywhere else. Or if you wanted something even lower maintenance than that, you could go dark, but I wouldn't go too dark. I think that with your skin tone doing like a medium brown, like a chocolate brown, would be really pretty. The next pictures are from Caitlin. She said, my natural hair is very dark brown. I've dabbled into highlights and balayage and don't know which tone of blonde would look best on me. The first two pictures are of my hair recently. Last one is when I got my hair done last. Also need a different hairstyle. Don't know what looks good on a round face with shorter hair. I think your hair looks beautiful in that photo where it's freshly done. That blend is beautiful. Whoever did your hair did a really, really good job. And I do really like that tone on you. I think that icy, more cool tone blonde looks really pretty on you. So as far as color, I would just stick to what you've been doing. That looks really pretty. Just make sure you're using a purple shampoo like every other time you're washing it to maintain that nice, cool tone so it doesn't start to look brassy. And as far as your haircut goes, when you have short hair and a rounder face, the kind of cut that's going to give the illusion of slimming your face down is something that is angled and is shorter in the back and then longer in the front. And it doesn't need to be like a really, really dramatic extreme angle. It can be a little bit more subtle. And I think that the length that you have is really good. So I would keep the length in the front and just bring it up shorter in the back. The next two photos are from Addie. She didn't send a message, she just sent the photos. You are so gorgeous too. Wow. I just need to zoom in on these eyelashes. Oh, what? Those look like her natural lashes. They are so freaking long. Do you get a lift in tint? Or is that just mascara? Tell us your secrets. Okay, so for Addie's hair, I love the color. It's so shiny, it looks nice and healthy. The only thing that I would suggest for you is maybe adding some bangs. If you notice, she has a little bit of a weaker hairline, so it kind of comes back a little bit, and then she has all those little short, wispy baby hairs, and that gives the illusion of a bigger forehead. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but just my professional opinion would be adding some bangs. And if you didn't want to do just regular straight across bangs, I would suggest doing curtain bangs that are a little bit longer. You could even do like a longer side bang if you wanted to, but I think curtain bangs would look really pretty and they are super in right now. And I think it would make your hair look a little bit fuller as well. Kind of the same thing that I said with the first girl, Allie, where right up here at the top of her head, it just kind of like hangs and looks a little bit flat to her face. Adding some bangs would add a little bit more volume up in this top area. So that'd be my suggestion for you, Addie. Thank you so much for sending in your pictures. And seriously, tell us about your eyelashes. The next photos are from Excel. Am I saying that right? Change it or keep it blonde. I do like you blonde, 
but I just feel like that particular tone of blonde kind of washes your skin out a little bit. I would just maybe suggest doing something with a darker root and just doing a slightly darker tone of blonde because I just feel like that particular tone and especially not having any kind of root, I feel like it almost kind of like blends in with your skin a little bit. So yeah, I would just do a shadow root and then just tone it a little bit of a darker tone of blonde. Thank you for your photos. The next pictures are from Samantha. Cute name. I'm so corny, oh my God. She said, I would love some color recommendations. I have virgin hair. Oh my God, that is like such a rarity these days. It's really hard to find people that don't have any color at all. Your hair is gorgeous. Your natural color is the most perfect brown ever. It's like the most beautiful chocolate and it's so shiny and it looks so healthy. But if you are kind of getting that itch, like you want to do something a little bit different, I totally get that. I would maybe just add a couple balayaged highlights, some around your face, a little bit just on the ends, but I wouldn't do anything too light, maybe just like two shades lighter than your natural color. And as far as cut goes, I think that length is so pretty. The way you have it styled in these photos is beautiful. I would maybe add a little bit of a face frame. I don't know if you always wear it in such a heavy side part, but I feel like it kind of covers over your face a little bit and your face is so beautiful. So I do a little bit of a face frame just to add a little bit of shape to your haircut and you know, a little something different. The next two photos are from Kiara. She didn't send a message, just the photos. You are so cute. I love that hair color, love that length. If you guys couldn't tell, I'm a big fan of Bob's. <laughs> And I like that the color is toned down so it works with your natural color really well. Sometimes when I see people whose natural hair color is really, really dark and they have these bright like golden colored highlights, I just wanna be like, girl, just tone them darker. Cause that can just look so harsh. And I love this tone. I think that it works with your skin tone really well. I would just say now that you have color processed hair and hair that's been lightened, and especially if you are going to be smoothing and straightening it out on a regular basis, make sure you're going in for regular trims so that you can keep your hair nice and healthy and avoid any split ends and breakage and that kind of stuff. The next photos are from Carolina. She said, so I had wanted to go light and I bleached my hair and dyed it with a box dye. I know it isn't worth it in the long run. I've had my hair like this for two months now and I get bored fast. What do you think of it? Considering you did that yourself and just use like stuff out of a box, it looks pretty good. You did a good job. I will say though, and again, it could be the lighting, but something about that particular tone I don't love with your skin tone. I feel like it washes you out a bit. And keeping your hair that light, especially when your natural color is so dark, is going to be a pain to do on your own at home. So I would suggest doing more of like a chocolatey color. If you look up at her roots, like right between where her natural dark hair is coming in and where that blonde is, there's that really pretty like medium brown chocolate kind of color. That I think would look so good on you and that would be a lot easier to maintain. The next photo is from Michaela. She said, I've always wanted to go lighter at the ends, but I'm afraid, but my hair has box dye that doesn't stay. It fades so fast. The box dye is just a dark brown. Okay, I really wanted to include this one because so many people have the misconception that when you put color in your hair, it'll just fade and then once it looks faded, that means that it's gone and it's out of your hair and you'll be able to lighten it, no problem. And that is not the case. So this is just a PSA to all of you guys out there. If you ever go to a salon to get your hair done and the stylist asks if you have any color in your hair, even if it's been five or six months since you last did it and you feel like it's faded at this point, let them know anyway. Anything that you have done to your hair, any color, any chemical product at all that you've put on your hair within the last year or two, your stylist needs to know about it. Because even though you feel like the color fades and it doesn't last in your hair, I guarantee that if you were to go and apply bleach to your hair, it would start to turn a really like reddish, orangey, uneven kind of color. Like that box dye, it's still somewhere deep in your hair. And as soon as you try to lighten it, it's all gonna come to the surface and it's not gonna lighten the same way 
as your natural virgin uncolored hair would. I do think that adding some lighter pieces to your hair would be really pretty to add some dimension, but just keep in mind that because you do have box dye in your hair, it may be a little tricky and you might not be able to go too light or you may have to cut your hair a little bit in order to lay in it. The next photos are from Gab, full on just judge my hair. Will it be nice or short? Does it look healthy? Oh, and she wants me to blur her face, so I will. Ooh, damn, your hair is long. I think about people like Carly Bible here on YouTube who has super, super long hair and it's just like all one length and it just, it looks so good on her. So I'm kind of into that. I feel like, I don't know, there's just something that's like very hippie and 70s about it. My thing is like, if you have all this hair but you're not doing anything with it, then what's the point? You know what I mean? So I would suggest doing a little something to it just to give it some style and add a little bit of product just to help smooth everything out. Cause it does, it's not that it looks unhealthy, but it looks a little bit dry and just kind of dull. Not saying that you have to put any heat on it or do all these fancy things. Just go to sleep with damp hair in some braids and then when you take them out in the morning, it'll add some really cool waves to your hair. And then I would just get some type of serum or like finishing oil. Um, the Paul Mitchell Super Skinny Serum is really good. It comes in a huge bottle and it's not too expensive. Just take a pump or two of that, rub it between your hands, and then just pull it through like your mid strand to your ends. It's gonna add a little bit of shine to your hair. And I think that would be really pretty. And the best part about it is you don't have to apply any heat, so you're not gonna be doing any damage to your hair. The next photo is from Britt. She said, this is my hair unstyled. I had a horrible ombre done to my hair over the summer and went to someone different and she made it look better, but I can still see the terrible ombre. Will I have to wait for it to grow out before I'll be able to not notice it? I don't really see anything too terrible here. I mean, it's a little bit hard to tell because of the way that you have your hair flip. But what I am noticing is that one piece kind of up towards the top where it's randomly very, very light, which is kind of random because then it like gets dark again and then it's lighter on the ends. But no, you don't have to wait for it to grow out. It's something that is totally fixable. I would find some photos online of hair that you do like and go to someone who specifically specializes in blondes and balayage and like dimensional lived in color and show them your photos, explain to them the situation and just tell them that you want something that's more blended because really all you would need to do is go through and take those lighter pieces and just kind of feather them up and create more of a blend and cover over those random light pieces right up at the top. So really all that you need from what I can tell in the photo is a balayage and a shadow root. But like I said, find photos of hair that you do like. That's always the best thing to do whenever you're going to a stylist, show them photos. It's a lot easier to visualize what it is that you want when we have a photo to reference. We're gonna do one more because I've already been sitting here for like almost an hour. The last photo is from Zoe. She said, help. So I'm naturally around a level seven to eight blonde. However, I got a dark shadow root done a while back and I was traveling while it all grew out. The shadow root was probably a level four or five and it looked awful growing out. So because I wasn't able to stop in and get my hair done, I went to Sally's and just colored my hair darker to try and cover up that dark color. I'm getting my hair done soon and I need advice. What change would you make to my hair? Oh boy. Let me just say, the color that you ended up putting over it is beautiful. You did a great job. And it definitely, it helped the situation for sure. And I think that given the circumstances, you probably did the best thing that you could have done just as like a quick fix at home. So whenever you are doing a shadow root on somebody, first and foremost, you have to use a demi-permanent hair color. And also the color you're using should not be too much darker than the person's natural hair color. That I could bet my entire life on is permanent color, like without a doubt. Demi-permanent is not as opaque. First of all, it does fade and lighten up over time, but it also isn't as opaque. It just creates like a really soft blend and like a buffer area. So there is mistake number one. Mistake number two was putting a color on that is 
so much darker. First of all, it just contrasts way too much with your blonde ends, but it also doesn't make sense. Like knowing that you are a natural blonde and that your blonde roots are obviously going to grow out, it just looks and I, this is no offense to you. Like, I don't want you to feel bad about it, but like, it just looks so stupid. And I, it blows my mind that any stylist would do that. Because the thing is too, now say you wanna go bring that blonde up higher, which presumably you're gonna want to, you have to now lift through super dark, permanent hair color. That area right there is going to be warm. And you can even see in the second photo where she did color over her hair. Yeah, it does cover it up a little bit and it blends it a little more. But you can still see that really dark band there. Oh, I'm so sorry that that happened to you. This is why it's so important to go to someone who's experienced and who is a color specialist. So thank you guys so much for sending in all of your photos. I got so many DMs and I would have loved to sit here and critique all of them trust me But we would have definitely been sitting here for like five hours But I'm gonna try to save some of these for future videos And like I said if you'd like to participate go ahead and send your photos over to that email address that I will have down in the description Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to everyone who sent in your photos I appreciate it so much. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up It helps my channel out a lot Make sure you also subscribe before you go and I'll see you guys in the next video Bye.